Nokia headquarters, in addition to the operational squadron, houses the engineering support workshops. They provide complete technical backup, from initial commissioning of the equipment on arrival in the country, through to detailed second line servicing. Fully automated program and functional test equipment is used on all types of mechanical and electrical components. The rapier units are quickly made available for deployment after a short commissioning check. In the training school, all operators and detachment commanders attend the basic equipment familiarization course. Target acquisition and engagement procedures are simulated by the instructor until all crew members have a complete understanding of their equipment and confidence in their ability to acquire a target within seconds of radar alarm. On the tracker, the detachment commander and operator combine their roles and thoroughly practice engagement and firing procedures. The course produces highly competent crews within 12 weeks. To gain expertise at tracking a moving target, films of a variety of aircraft are projected into a simulator. The performance of the operator is monitored by the instructor on a TV screen. Confidence in their equipment and each other is developed to a high level during classroom and outdoor lessons in which the crew begin to practice deployment procedures. With the inclusion of the launcher in training, the students progress rapidly to practicing the full deployment of fire units to defensive positions. The fire unit consists of a Land Rover carrying the tracker and four missiles, towing the launcher and generator unit. It can be deployed quickly and has good cross-country performance enabling it to reach the most suitable defensive location. Rapier can be quickly brought into action. The wheels are removed from the launcher, which is raised on jacks, ready to receive the missiles. The tasks of each member of the crew are carefully coordinated, and the value of the training of the school soon becomes evident. The Rapier is a direct hit missile the warhead exploding inside the enemy aircraft to cause massive structural damage. When the launcher is armed, the tracker is unloaded from the Land Rover, leveled and aligned with the launcher. The detachment commander then tests the launcher circuits and is ready to fire. The bearing of an aircraft that has been interrogated by the radar and found to be unfriendly is indicated by a light on the selector engagement zone unit. The tracker head is turned automatically to the same bearing and the operator begins tracking it directly through the optical system. Rapier can detect hostile targets at ranges in excess of 12 kilometers and has proved to be extremely effective against high-speed low-flying targets. On leaving the school, the crews go on to join their squadron throughout Oman on standby duty. And the training must become increasingly representative of combat conditions. Training in this way also means that the fire units are being used in a totally representative manner whilst they are being subjected to the rigours of desert conditions. The fire units and crews must be able to deploy to any site to cover a possible attack from any direction or to provide cover from air attack for forward units operating away from base. Nearer to home base, already planned and prepared defensive sites can be used into which the units can be deployed, or a permanent watch can be operated with normal crew and equipment rotation. The Sultan of Oman's Air Force ensures that its rapier crews are regularly put to the test, 
tracking their own aircraft. Simulated attacks are flown at low level and high speed. A very high degree of proficiency has been achieved by these now skilled operators. To continue to prove the system and give the operators total confidence under controlled range conditions, each rapier crew fires a live missile. Ideally complementing the role of the Sultan's Jaguar aircraft. <laughs> 